Hey, I'm David, and we're staying at a farmhouse in Bronson City. And Carol's going to tell you one of the things we're going to do. I've always enjoyed quilts because my grandmother made hundreds of gorgeous quilts. So I decided that we would do the Bryson City quilt trip. Apparently, this tradition started in 2001, and there are uh, thousands across 49 states. And here in Swain County, we're going to see 12. Our first stop is going to be at Island Park, the double wedding ring quilt patch. Some good looking dogs. Hi there. Hey there. Oh, it's a butterfly. This is a wedding ring, except that they took the colors from the area and built it into the double wedding ring. Okay, there's no what? There's no what? I know! Okay, you go halfway around. <laughs> oh, this is pretty. Oh, we got a walkway down to the river. The quilt block at the Island Park was created by T. Angel, who wanted it to reflect flowers that were seen in the park during the summer months and to also provide a bright spot in the park during the winter months. When we came in, those rings were rings. Double wedding ring. Now, yes, but, and this is the picture that's on the website. And it really looks more like a flower this far back. It's the same picture? It's the same quilt, but it's not a traditional double wedding ring color. Because typically, the double wedding ring, the only color in it is the actual rings. But they change the colors to reflect uh, the surroundings. So far back from here, it looks just like the flower. It does. But when you, get... you get closer, you can see the rings. Oh, that is weird. Because I know when I was looking at it on the left side, it's like... That's not a double wedding ring. Well, you see, when I was back there, I was like, that's a total, does it change? But no. It, it, but it, see, now you can see. I can see the rings. The rings. That is just so weird, because it was a flower over there. Yes, it was. I, I don't understand still. I hope it comes up on the camera where you can see it that way. Yeah. I wonder what silver bow is. Well, I'm armor. Yeah. And we got this dedicated to oh, memory of Buddy Abbott. Abbott. His unique efforts and unselfish and selfish devotion to nature helped make this island park a reality. May 1991. Mm -mm -mm. Debbie Mills made her first quilt block, the Dresden Plate, in 1978. She showed it to a friend 21 years later, and the friend took it to have it framed. After six years, she still didn't have the quilt block back. And in the seventh year, her friend presented it all framed. It is now on display in the gallery. The Dresden plate was a very popular quilt pattern in the 20s and 30s. My mother did a version in placemats. 
The Appalachian Dream Square was the first one placed in Bryson City, Swain County. It has the traditional elements of a mountain quilt and reflects the colors of a fall day. We would tell you where it's located, but my husband has some additional information. Okay, now here's the rest of the story. According to the locals, the Chamber of Commerce building has been sold. So this is also the first quilt patch that has been removed. And nobody knows where the Chamber of Commerce is now. Railroad Spirit is located on the depot. And this is a quote from their site. The bold colors and railroad crossing design style Remind us that we are a community dedicated to the preservation and celebration of our railroad and mountain history. We honor those who have committed their life and fortunes to this endeavor. The Calhoun House is a historic landmark in Bryson City. It was built as a hotel in the 1920s, but in the 1930s was used as apartments for the men building the Fontana Dam. It is now owned by Edward and Shirley C. Isiola, who purchased and restored it to its former beauty. The quilt block reflects their travels through the United States. On our first anniversary, I surprised Carol with a trip to the Calhoun House. They met and went beyond our expectation of a great place to stay. Ashley Hackshaw is the creator of the Smoky Mountains Quilt Block. Though this is not a traditional quilt block, it was created to reflect the scrappy quilts that were made from small pieces of fabric. Its blue appearance reflects the blueness often seen in the mountains. This is a custom design, and I'm quoting from the side as it describes the colors. The blue water of Deep Creek, as depicted in the block, flow right next to the campground. The green outer border represents the mountains, and the green leaves in the center represent the local conifers. Cabins are the darker yellow shapes. Tents are the red corner markers. The campground also has goats, which may be found in the yellows with their eyes, the darker yellow spots. And of course, the tube shape ties the block together. And the reason for the tubes is that you can rent tubes here to go down the river. We didn't know this place existed before this trail. There are also a great little general store that you can get your foods and snacks here. Harmony Square is located on Harmony Hall, which is located in the center of this campground. The owner's desire was to pay tribute to the pioneers who settled these mountains, and also their desire was for them and their guests to be able to enjoy nature. And this is also another benefit of the Quilt Trail. This looks like an awesome place to stay. Very secluded, the cabins have a lot of room, and they're just beautiful. Don't get discouraged on the way, Hero. It's a winding, hilly drive but it's well worth it. And I think we will probably see if we can't stay here in the future. What do you think? Leave some comments down below. If you stayed here, we would love to know. There are three quilt squares at the Southwestern Community College, which also has a head start there at this time. Um, I'm quoting from the site again. The Indian Trail Quilt, which is the first square, was selected to represent both the proximity of the Swain Center to the Kuala Boundary, as well as the Little Tennessee River, which was the last boundary of the Cherokee Nation before removal in 1838. The square also represents the college's commitment to keeping the trail open and clear for all students seeking to better themselves through education. The second quilt square is the Celtic chain, which represents the college's connections to the community. The third quilt square is the red flower bud, which represents the beauty that's found in the community, both in nature and man-made. This is one of my favorites on this trail. 
is the East Alarca Mountains. This red barn was built by the second owner, and upon his death, the wife established the red barn campground, and she began having square dances every Saturday night in the barn. There are a different couple who own it today, and of course the name has changed to the Smoky Mountain Meadows Campground. This is another one of those that you don't get discouraged going to. It's a little ways out of town. And you can also see it through the road. We asked for permission to ride through the campground so we could get a closer look so you could see it. The 12-pointed star. Quoting from the side again, star quilts are inspired by the morning star. Historically, star patterns were created by Native Americans with plant dyes and adorned buffalo hides and teepees. Later, missionaries introduced textiles and sewing, and the star quilt was born. Typically, they are a symbol of honor and generosity. The artist is Janet McDonald. And as you can see, you can see this from the train also, which gives you a hint on what our next video will be about. So until next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.